Hello YouTube, how's everyone doing? It's Professional here. So today I wanted to make a guide on the gambling in the casino. I'm still messing around and trying to figure out which one will be the best money maker, but here I'm going to give you guys a breakdown of all the gambling games from the slot machines to three card poker to blackjack and roulette. Now you guys here see I have a lot of chips. I will explain how each game works and how you can make money from it, and I will also talk about decreasing your chances of losing. The only game I will not be covering is spin the wheel because that's once a day and you spin the wheel for a prize. Also one thing before I I get started I will be mentioning my strategies and I've been pretty successful with them now do not think my strategies are the best everyone has their own strategies I know I will have some people in the comments saying no my strategies are better than yours it's all up to personal preference and opinion but I will explain how I like to play these games now let's get started now starting off I wanted to start with slot machines slot machines are the most simple game all you basically do is you go up the machines and you just hit the button or pull the lever to start the machine there's no difference between pushing the button and pulling the lever. Now there are different slot machines. In some, the minimum bet is 50 chips while the max is 500 chips, and in others, the minimum bet is 500 chips with a max bet of 5,000 chips. In order to check the payouts on slot machines, you would have to look above them. Some have a max payout of 500,000 chips, while others it's 100,000 chips. The best paying slot machines are the diamond slot machine and the fortune and glory machine. However, these are also the most expensive machines. You can see here I was playing the Vice City slot machine and I wasn't doing too well. When I did win, I got 200 chips. Each bet I made was 100 chips and I lost a lot before I won. When I win 200 chips, that is basically two spins again. You can make a max bet or a small bet, which is bet one. Betting max does not increase your odds at all. It gives you potentially more earnings if you win, but even if you win, it's just going to be double most often times of what you betted. Like for instance here, at a higher va valued slot machine, you can see I'm betting 500 minimum and I'm winning 1000 back. The difference is not that much. I'm going to lose a bunch of times before I win. It's not going to be really profitable. I did get lucky and I won 12,500 two times, but I have not won the jackpot yet and I have spun the slots so many times. Slots is purely a game of chance and luck. I don't recommend it if you're going for money in the casino as it's going to waste a lot of it. If you want to just have fun with it, then I recommend a lower paying slot machine so you don't waste that much money and keep playing until you win the jackpot. The higher valued ones jackpot will be bigger, but it's much easier to go broke from them. Slots, they're just a game where you sit down, you keep spinning until you get that lucky win, but most often times, you won't be getting much back. Next up we have Roulette. Now Roulette is a game that requires some strategy and skill, but it's mostly based on luck as well. It's the most luck based table game. The objective in Roulette is simple. Correctly guess what number or color or set of numbers the white ball will land on. You can choose to place a bet on the color either red or black, or you can put, put a bet on even or odd. You can additionally put a bet on 1 through 19 or 20 through 36. If you do this, it's basically a 50% chance of winning. It's a little less than 50% because in roulette, you also have a green zero and a double zero, so you also have to factor those numbers in. If it lands on that, you will lose if you didn't bet on it. So betting on even, odd, red, black, 1 through 18, 19 through 36 gives you the greatest chances of winning. However, it also gives you the least back. Now I know what some people are going to ask me, if these numbers have the highest probability of winning, then why should you bet on others? If you bet on others, your chances of winning are far lower, however the rewards are much greater. For example, if we look here, a straight up bet on an individual number, you get a pay ratio of 35 to 1, which means you get your initial bet back, plus it's multiplied by 35 times. While this is a lot more than normal, chances of this are extremely slim. You would basically have a 1 in 38 chance of it landing on that number because you also have to count the zero and the double zero. A two number bet pays 17 to 1, but the prob probability of that is 2 in 38. A three number bet pays 11 to 1, and a six number bet pays 5 to 1. While these rewards are much greater than just betting on red or black for instance, the risk is higher. And you gotta ask yourself, how many times am I gonna lose before I win? Because oftentimes it's not gonna pay off. You might win once, but you're gonna go negative more than you win. It's stacked against you, and the house has an advantage. You can, however, make up the 10 bets in roulette. So you can bet a little on one, and then you have a much smaller chance with that one, and then you bet higher on a much higher chance one. That way, you still have multiple chances to win some money back even if you lose the higher bet. This is all up to opinion on what the best bets to make are, but how I like to do it personally is I bet on colors and one set of 12 or one column which is basically the same thing. A column or a 12 number bet is basically a 1 in 3 chances of winning. It's a little lower because of the 0 and the double 0, however, it's the greatest chances of winning besides the even, the odds, the colors, the 1 through 18, and 19 through 36. 
the 12 number bets give you back 2 to 1 earnings versus a 1 to 1 earnings with the colors, the odds, or the evens, 1 through 18, 19 through 36. If I bet, for instance, 5,000 chips on a red, I'm going to win 5,000 chips. So I will get back 10,000 chips, but I'm really getting a profit of 5,000 chips. Now, if betting 5,000 on 12 numbers, I will be getting 15,000 back, so it will be a 10,000 profit. Red is my favorite color to bet on. I just bet on it until I win. It's basically doesn't really matter for me for colors. I'll just keep betting on one until it eventually wins. In my opinion, I see it as worth it to bet on one to one chances like the color, like red here. Colors, odds, evens, one through 18, 19 through 36, and the 12 number of bets. The others, the probability of winning is much less, and I feel like I'm going to end up losing more money there than winning. What I sometimes do, and you can see it here, is I put 5,000 chips on red. That's usually my starting bet, and I will put some on the first 12. Not a lot, because I've, I have less of a chance of winning, like 1,000 chips here. That way, if I lose on red, but I win on the first 12, I will get 3,000 chips back. So I will go 2,000 negative versus 5,000. Alternatively, if I win on red, but I lose on 12, I will get... I, I will get 10,000 chips back, but I will be really down 1,000, so I will make a 4,000 chip profit. Let's say you win both the 5,000 chip bet on red and the 1,000 chip bet on the first 12. You will be getting back 13,000 chips. That is an 8,000 chip profit. These are small bets that I'm making, and you can make much larger bets, but the reason that I'm making them so small is so that if I lose, I increase my bets, so I'll get my money back. I will put more chips on the red, and, and on the first 12, I'll make my money back, but if I lose again, I'll increase the, the bet again. But I don't like increasing too much, because then you will start losing a lot. If I keep being on a losing streak, I'll just go back to small bets, and I'll try to make my money back that way. Roulette, it requires a lot of thinking on your probability, how you want to make bets, and a lot of it is based on luck. Next up, we have horse racing. Now, this is probably my favorite activity. Horse racing is very simple, but it's a combination of luck and skill. More luck, I would say. However, you have higher odds of choosing the right horse. I find horse racing much easier than roulette, and the reason is because the odds are lower, but you still have a higher chance of winning. How? Take a look at this, for instance. Horse Blue Dream has 2 to 1 odds. Just like in roulette, whatever I bet on, it will be multiplied by 2 here based on the odds. So if I bet 5,000, I will get 15,000 chips back, a 10,000 chip profit. I can make more money, and I have a greater chance of winning, because if you look at all the other horses here, what do you notice? Even though Blue Dream has 2 to 1 odds, it's the best horse out of all of them. It has the highest probability of winning. Sometimes the best horse will have a probability of 3 to 1, and that's even more money back for you. So take a look at this. I bet 5,000 chips on Blue Dream, and I win 15,000 chips back. Nice, right? You only get paid if your horse wins first, not second or third place. So only if you win first place, you'll get paid. On my second race here, I bet on horse constant brag, and because the horse has 3 to 1 odds, I will be getting back 20,000 chips for 5,000 instead of 15,000. It's some pretty good money here. If you see an even odd for a horse, that's even better than 2 to 1, but it pays less. Sometimes multiple horses will have the same odds. Now, my personal opinion, in horse racing, bet on the first two horses only. The first two horses are almost always going to win, I've noticed. You can multiply your earnings a lot in horse racing, and for instance, if I bet 5,000 chips on a 3 to 1 horse in odds, and I lose 5,000 chips, I can make my money back, making the exact same bet again. And if I win, I will get 20,000 chips back, so I will be getting a 10,000 chip profit down from my 5,000. Horse betting is a lot easier than roulette. Now, I know what some people are going to ask. Should I bet on the lower horses? In my opinion, no. Just the first two. Take a look at the lower horse here. Can't be wronger. If I bet on that one, I will get 28 times my money back. But the probability of that horse winning is so little. If you decide to bet on these horses, bet very little. Because you're going to lose most of the time. The top two will almost always win. Lastly, there are main events and single events. The pay is no different in them. Main events can have better odds odds on horses or single events can bet on both the difference is main events start every five minutes versus single events when it, whenever you bet main events are you versing other players while single you're playing by yourself next we have blackjack blackjack is a very unique game that requires skill strategy and luck the amount that i have played it i would say 60 percent luck 40 percent strategy the objective in blackjack is to beat the dealer in card numbers. You cannot go over 21. If you go over 21, you are bust and you lose. When you start out, you get two cards. It's impossible for you to go bust in those two cards. The dealer gets two cards as well. You see the first card, but you don't see the second card. 
face cards are very important in blackjack. When I was talking about face cards during my stream, many people were asking me what they are. A face card is any kind of card that is a queen, jack, or a king. These cards are all worth 10 points. So if you have one king, one queen, it's 20. Or two kings, 20. As well as two jacks, 20. Or one jack and one king, it's 20. Face cards are notorious for making you go bust more than any other card. Almost always when I go bust, it's due to a face card. The reason I say blackjack is based on luck is because the luck aspect is on what cards you get and what the dealer gets. You can't control this. The strategy aspect is knowing when to ask for a card and when to stand and when to double down and split. You want to have more points than the dealer. When you start each hand, you get two cards. You can either ask for a card or stand. If you stand, you're basically saying, I feel comfortable with this hand and the dealer reveals their cards and a winner is determined. If you have higher cards, you win. If the dealer has higher cards, they win. Now, if you and the dealer have the same number in cards, it becomes a push and nobody wins. You get your betting money back though. If your first two cards are 21 in total, you get blackjack and automatically win you get your initial bet back. So for instance, let's say we get 5,000, we bet 5,000, we get 10,000 back like a normal win, but we also get 2,500 or 12,500 chips in total. Blackjack 21 card wins will pay you your bet back plus half of the bet, a nice bonus. But be warned, the dealer can also get 21 and if they get blackjack, you automatically lose. Now what cards should you stand on and when should you ask for a card? It's up to opinion, but here's how I do it. I count cards, and you can't do this in a real casino. Dealers are trained to spot it, and you will be thrown out if you do so. But in the game, you can do it. I look at what cards I have, and I look at the dealer's hands. Face cards can be your best friend or your worst enemy. If you look at this hand, I have 13. I have a queen and a three. I look at the dealer's hands, and I see a 10. Because I already have a queen, and the dealer has a 10, I know the probability of me getting a 10 is lower. So I ask for another card, and I get an eight, and I win. Now, when shouldn't you ask for a card? My personal strategy is whenever I get 16 or over, I never ask for another card. Below 16, I will count cards and I will see what cards are on the table. Here, I have a seven, a two, and a six. The only way I can increase it is if I get anything six and lower because I have 15. My probability of that is much lower, so I'm going to stand. Even though 15 is a small number to stand on, I'm gonna see what the dealer gets, and I win. Some hands, you're gonna lose, even if you stand or ask for a card. Remember, if you go over 21, you're bust and you lost. However, there are other features in blackjack, and that is doubling down. During my casino stream, a lot of people kept asking me, what is doubling down? Doubling down can really help you, especially if you're in a losing streak. Doubling down basically asks for another card, but you also double your bet. You can lose double or get double back. When should you double down? I only double down on 11. That is a number I always double down on. I have no risk of going bust at that number, and if I get 21, I win. Almost always when I double down on 11, I win. You can double down on 10, to, you can double down on 10 also, but 11 is closer to 21 and you have a higher probability of winning. You can also split cards. If you have doubles, uh, create two hands. I recommend doing this, especially if you have two aces. Aces are what get new players the most confused in blackjack. Aces are the highest valued card and the lowest at the same time. An ace can be worth either 11 or one. For instance, here you can see I have 17. I have an ace and a six. The ace is counted as 11 in this case. I can ask for a card because even if I go bust, the ace will become a one, so I will be safe. If you have an ace and you have a medium number like 15, 16, 17, always ask for another card. You can try to get a better hand. Lastly, what numbers are the best in blackjack? Anything 17 and over is the best hands, with 21 being the best. The dealer, they have to stand on 17. So if they get to 17, they can't draw any more cards. Even if you stand on a low number and they go past that, you can still win. How? Let's say I have 15 in points. I don't feel confident in my cards and the dealer has a six and then asks for a card. I stand, the dealer gets a card, they get a king, that makes it 16 one point over me. Even though they are one point over me, they still have to draw another card and that's where they can go bust because they have less of a chance of going to 21 and under. What are the best bets to make? Up to you really. I personally make 5,000 chip bets. If I lose, I go to 7,000 or 8,000 bets. So I still get some money back. And if I lose again, I bet 10,000 and I keep increasing my bet until I get my money back. If I win, I go back to betting 5,000. Finally, we have three card poker. This game involves the most strategy in my opinion, but there is still a lot of luck involved in playing this game. Three card poker is a game where you have to beat the dealer, not in 21 like in blackjack, but in having better cards. There are four types of hands. A high 
card hand, which is the least best hand but can still win in some situations. Depending on what card you get, the high card will be your best card. You can get a 5 high, a 6 high, a 10 high, a queen high, king high, jack high, or ace high. Unlike blackjack though, this is important not to be confused. The face cards, they are not all equal. They're not. The jack is the least best face card, then it's the queen, then king, and then ace is the best out of all of them. The next hand of cards that we can get is a pair. A pair is any kind of cards that are two. So if you have two of the same cards, you have a pair. So if you get two threes, two kings, or two queens, that's a pair. You can also get two numbers, like two threes, two fours. A pair hand will always be the high card hand. Even if someone has an ace high card hand, and you have a pair of twos, it will beat it. After that, we have a straight hand. A straight hand is any kind of hand that has numbers in order. So let's say you have a hand of three cards, which are three, four, five. That is a straight, because they are all in order. After that, we have a flush, which is a hand where all three cards have the same symbol. So if you have three hearts in your cards, that's a flush. There is also three of a kind, where you have three of the same cards. And finally, there is a straight flush, where all three cards are the same symbol, and also in numerical order. All of these cards have different bonuses. They are marked on the table, for instance. A straight flush in pair plus, you get a pay of 40 to 1, and in ante, it's 5 to 1. That's because pair plus hands are a bit rarer to get good hands. Now, how do you use these against a dealer? First, you have to choose what kind of bet you want to make. You can either make an ante bet, where you can bet a certain amount, then you can double your ante if you feel confident, or fold, where you lose the ante, but not more than that. The next bet is a pair plus bet. You can make either a pair plus or an ante bet or both. Now, it's important not to get confused. A pair plus bet is betting that you have a pair, and even if the dealer has better cards than you, you will win if you have a pair. It's not a bet against the dealer, but a bet that you will have a pair. An ante bet is betting a certain amount, like in this clip. I'm betting 2,500 chips. I look at my three cards. If I feel confident, I will win. I play that hand and I put the same ante in again, another 2,500 chips or how much you bet. Now, if you lose, you lose the initial ante and the second ante. The payouts vary depending on if the dealer is a queen. The dealer's hand has to be a queen high card or better to play. If they do not have that, they do not play. If they do not play, you get paid for the first ante, but not the second one. That means if you get a good hand and you play and you win, but the dealer does not have a queen or higher, let's say you beat 2,500. You bet 2,500 and you win on the first ante. In the second, it has to be the same bet. You'll get 7,500 back if the dealer does not have a queen. But if the dealer plays and has, and has a queen or better, you get 10,000 back. Now the question is, should you bet anti, pair, plus, or both? There is no right answer. It's all up to debate. People argue all the time which is better. I'm not saying which one is better, but my preference is anti. Why? Because I like looking at my cards and deciding. If you just do a pair plus bet, you don't get a chance to look, and the hand is either immediately a loss or a win. Anteing lets me look at my cards, and I will see if I can lose. If I'm going to lose and I don't feel confident, I'm going to fold. But at least I can make a decision on whether I want to put more, more in or not. How do I play? If I have a king or better high card, I usually play. If I have a high ace, I will mostly play. If I have a pair, I always play. Even if it's a pair of twos, you can see that when I have pairs, I almost always win. If you go for antis like me, the trick is to bet half of what you normally bet. That way, if you don't like your cards, fold. And if you don't like it um, and you play it, you know, you can choose to um, you can choose to either fold or you can choose to raise the ante. And that is that for this guy. I hope this has helped people out. If anyone has any questions, post them down below. I'll try to answer as many people as I can. Now, one final question. What is the most profitable game? It's all down to opinion. I personally feel it's horse racing that's the most profitable, but everyone has a different game they like to play. I hope that you guys enjoyed this guide and found it helpful. If you did, drop a like. If you're new to my channel, enjoy my content, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everyone.